Hi everyone, my name is Lisa and I am Toronto based art curator and art agent. Today I'm visiting uh, art studio Toronto based artist Sarah Phillips and she's a well known Canadian uh, abstract artist who works with uh, texture, color, and paint. And I'm super excited to show you her works. So let's come inside and meet Sarah. Can you tell me more about how you became a full-time artist? When it came time to apply to university for art, my friends said that I would be a starving artist. So I, it, it deterred me and I decided to pursue my second passion, which is wildlife biology. Mm -hmm. And I ended up going to Waterloo and got my Bachelor of Science and became a wildlife biologist. Went to Australia, uh, studied koalas and wallabies, did a lot of field work capturing animals, doing inventories, it's pretty amazing. And a lot of the the nature the nature aspect of my of my previous career comes out in a lot of my work. I, a lot of people see aerial views mm -hmm. of islands and um, water, ocean, things like that. Um, and then what one day after years of uh, being in the biology field my client suggested I start painting, which was a little bit odd. Mm -hmm. And I decided to take her up on her idea. And my mom happened to give me canvases and paints at the same time. And so I just, I took these canvases and I kind of Jackson Pollocked them. Uh, and, and then my client actually ended up commissioning a few paintings. And I think she bought a total of seven. Wow. So my, my confidence was there from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then from there, I was offered an art show and a studio space, and I sold half of my art show. And people were very attracted to my work and wanting more and asking for customs, uh, custom pieces. And I just, uh, and the rest is history. So I decided to go full throttle and jump in all the way. After a few years of having a side job, mm -hmm. I decided to let that go and go full-time artist. Amazing, I'm amazing. impressed. Yes. What a journey. It, it's unbelievable, really. This is my true calling, no question. Perfect, so I have a short quiz for you, so sure. I'll ask you a quick question so we can know you better and you'll just give me a short answer. Sure. So the first one, what is your favorite color? Pink, hot, hot pink. Your favorite shape? Circles. Your favorite canvas size? Um, the larger the better. So something like this, uh, 72 by 72 inches. Um, anything probably bigger than a 36 by 60. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite book? I love psychological thrillers. Mm -hmm. uh, and right now I'm reading on a different level, on a spiritual level, I'm reading um, The Universe Has Your Back. Amazing, I'll check it out. Yes. What's your favorite season? Uh, spring and summer. Amazing, music or silence? Both. I, I love music, I listen to music when I paint. Uh, and I also love quiet, when I'm not painting. <laughs> <laughs> coffee or tea? Both, love coffee for the caffeine, tea for the taste. Yes, and the last one, you get inspired by? Um, I get inspired by my experiences, people, places, trips. The, my inspiration just comes from within, and it comes from my intuition, and I just let it flow. I found your YouTube channel, and I really liked the, your last protest video. I really felt like I was watching the meditative movie and I was really excited to look how the painting was evolving with consta constant addition and subtraction of colors. It took you only two and a half minutes to finish the painting. Well, yeah, so that was a time lapse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. Do you usually worry with that? I don't want people to think that it's only that long. Um, the ones that um, happen the quickest mm -hmm. are the ones that are the most popular, but people don't really know that. Yeah. Um, unless I tell them. Uh, because I think there's like a freedom w within those pieces where I, I don't think too much about it and they just happen quickly and naturally. It's the ones that take a while to create that are maybe a little contrived. Mm -hmm. So those pieces, 
sometimes I just paint over and I start again because Perfect. I want them to be, I want my, my gut to tell me that it's right. Yeah, and for anyone who wants to see Sarah in action, I'll put a link to her video underneath my video. And I also was intrigued by all of the tools that you used during the video. It was like different sizes brushes, it was palette knives, you even used the window cleaning brush, if yes, I'm yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> tell me more about the magic tools that you use every day. Um, I, I do buy a lot of my tools at the dollar store mm -hmm. or um, the hardware store. I don't often buy them from the art store. I find those tools, uh, they're made with metal, not all, but mm. the ones, the, the, the type of tool that I need, the shape of it, um, the art store doesn't have those in the right, with the right flexibility. Mm. So the dollar store does have a, like a squeegee, like a window cleaner, <laughs> tool that I use is my signature so tool unique. and the reason I like it is because I have a lot of texture on my paintings mm -hmm. so I need something that will be flexible around that texture and if I yes. were to use a metal um, knife or a metal um, a metal tool it would just skim over the texture and that's not what I'm looking for interesting it's good tip suggestion yeah yeah artists <laughs> yes. who work with texture yeah Perfect. So let's talk about business and how you work as a full-time artist and the business size of being a full-time artist. I look at your CV and you have an extensive history of exhibitions in Toronto as well as uh, in US and Europe. Tell me more how you select the shows and which one work for you, which one don't work for you. Well, in the beginning of my art career, um, and probably for most artists, mm -hmm. you, you just take everything. You yeah. do everything and you learn along the way which mm -hmm. ones are good for you, which ones are not. Um, and so I've reached a point in my career where I'm very selective and I only do the shows that um, really appeal to my ultimate goal, which mm -hmm. is to reach out to a certain audience. Yeah. And if the show it doesn't uh, have that... Um, it doesn't offer that, mm -hmm. then I won't, I won't even go there. And to be honest, a lot of my, my um, decisions are based on my intuition. I know that your works were showcased in Mark Anthony's salon and he became your client and also bought art for his house. So tell me, what do you feel about exhibiting your works outside traditional art gallery space? Uh, well, I, I consider myself the non-artist artist. I think mm -hmm. it's really important to think outside the box. Uh, and I haven't really pursued the gallery, uh, being represented by a gallery. Mm -hmm. I really love the idea of people coming to me and coming to my studio and I can create a connection with them uh, and they purchase their work through me. It, there's just something really personal about that. Mm -hmm. And I think in, when you're, if you're represented by a big gallery, yeah. um, you, you may, your sales would probably go through the gallery and, and I think you would lose that, a bit of that. And because I've had so much I've had that, a taste of that, yeah. and I have a good relationship and good connections with my collectors. Um, I, I really enjoy that part of it. Amazing. Talking about art collectors, I saw a photo recently on your Instagram where you posted artworks that your collector purchased for his office. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about how you find your clients and who your clients are. What's your market? Well, um, I'm now just getting into selling art to collectors for their offices. Mm -hmm. um, I do a lot of my own marketing and people may find me through Googling my art and, and abstract artist uh, and just go straight to my website. Mm -hmm. However, uh, you know, I do all the social media channels mm -hmm. as well as LinkedIn um, and yeah, I, I now have my art art collections in mm -hmm. a few offices. One, one of them is in Boston uh, and it's great. Uh, these collectors, they're very dedicated to art and art in the office creates such an inspiring um, space for everyone that works there. And I absolutely love that part and of it. And having your art in their office is a yes. joy and Yes, color. exactly. It just, cha it just changes everything, yeah. Okay. I'm interested to know more about how you work in the studio and what your work day look like? Yeah, so every day is different. That's the joy of it. Um, it requires a lot of discipline mm -hmm. as well. Uh, so typically I come to the studio around 10 o'clock in the morning 
and I usually have an idea of what I'm going to do, mm -hmm. but sometimes that can just change on a dime. Uh, I try to do all of my stretching and prep on the weekends, and then during the week I can just come in and paint. Uh, but it's not all, you know, I come in, I, I come in and have this, these amazing painting sessions. There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that happens, including like um, putting the hardware on or troubleshooting a, a stretcher that's warped or mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of things that people don't see. Um, but for the most part, I absolutely thrive on the painting process, knowing that I can come in and just paint is yeah, the best. Sure. Does it get lonely to be here all day by yourself? Uh, I w uh, even though I would call myself an extrovert, I really do love my alone time. And I don't get lonely at all. I would say that I really love the time alone to recharge. Uh, I listen to music a lot, some podcasts. So that, I guess, would keep me company in a way. Yeah. Uh, but I do find I can't be in the studio for more than um, five to six hours at a time painting. Mm -hmm. I, it, I just, it's very exhausting. It actually, okay. it's probably something that not a lot of people would think of, but you know, by the time I get home, I'm really tired, so. <laughs> yeah. So let's move around to your studio and you can showcase me your works. I'm thrilling to know more about your paint technique and maybe you can talk more about sure. showing the works. Sure. your technique and I also know you have four series that we can call four art collections. Tell me how you make art, why you call them this way. I'm excited to know. Okay so we'll start off with my ambient series. This series uh, was what I started with at the begin beginning of my art career. Mm -hmm. uh, these pieces are very calming. Um, they have a nature uh, inspired aspect to them and a lot of my collectors are seeing that I'm being a little bit more bold and daring now with my other series. Uh, and there are, so I'm trying to get back to these because there's just a certain type of peace that people yeah. feel when they are in the presence of these yeah, pieces. Yeah, I really like the colors and it's very shiny. What do you use on top? So as you can see, I'll just start with what's on right at the bottom. So I do a lot of texture. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's my signature. Yes. Uh, and And then I apply the paint. Um, these pieces have kind of a misty feel to them. There's a lot of blending. Uh, and the final coat is a varnish, so it'll be either gloss or semi-gloss. Um, I rarely use matte. I like mm -hmm. the vibrancy uh, really comes through when you use gloss. Amazing. How long will it take you to make something like this? That's also a really difficult, that's a yeah. difficult question to answer. Uh, it depends on each piece. Typically, the painting part will mm -hmm. happen all at once. Uh, because it's acrylic, it dries really quickly. Yes. And for me to come back and try to alter things, it's just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, the prep beforehand, uh, including drying time, can be up to a week, I would say. Some pieces, uh, you know, I could work on them for days, and then and if my gut doesn't say that they're right, I might paint over them and start again. But the joy of that is I'll paint it white, start over, and because it's acrylic, when I apply any kind of water or the acrylic, different acrylic paints on top, mm -hmm. it sometimes pulls off that white and the, the previous painting little, will peek through in little spots. And people are actually more attracted to those and they really don't know why. But what it is I think that they're attracted to is that there's just more depth because there's, there's a piece underneath or maybe even two mm -hmm. pieces. Okay, learning some small secrets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, let's move for your next series. Okay. Oh, it's called Dream. This is my dream series. Uh, as you can probably tell, it's dreamy. Uh, I, this technique is pretty common, I would say, in the art world. It's the pouring technique. Uh, and so diluting the paints and lying the canvas flat and pouring the paint on different colors different consistencies and moving the paint around. And one thing I do, and I, it is a bit of a secret, but I'll tell you, uh, I actually use a hair dryer to move the paint around. Wow. Not always, uh, but with this technique, there's a lot of babysitting involved because 
depending on the angle of the floor or angle of the table, mm -hmm. or even if the canvas, how it's stretched or if there's texture, the paint, you could create this beautiful pour and then come back the next day and it's all, it's changed. Yeah. So um, there's a lot of, even though it seems like a simple technique, there's a lot of learning, there's a big learning curve involved in, in, a, sure. in creating the pouring technique that works for you. So you have to do it all at once, right? Y yes, you yes, definitely. Yeah, and, uh, but however, um, as I fine tune this technique, I am coming back to it the mm -hmm. next day and highlighting and adding paint on. One thing that I haven't mentioned yet um, is that I never use brushes. For this one? For any. For any. Wow. I would say maybe 5% of mm -hmm. my painting career involves <laughs> brushes. Uh, I use my hands. Mm -hmm. I wear gloves. Use my hands to, to put the paint on. Um, I like to feel the paint so I know what uh, consistency I'm working with. Um, brushes, it's a little too contrived for me. Yeah. I, I like tools in my hands. It, can, it becomes very personal. Yes, exactly. Perfect. So let's move for your next work. I love it. It's so dynamic. It's so textured. Tell me more. Uh, this is my edgy urban series. Uh, as you can see, it's edgy. Um, this is the type of series that I've been spending a lot of time on lately. Mm -hmm. I love the boldness, um, the freedom in these pieces. Uh, I, I find myself a little edgy, so this is very much a Sarah Phelps. I mean, they're all Sarah Phelps, but um, yeah, this I would say is um, something that would appeal to a certain type of person. But uh, yeah, these ones are the, the most fun to do mm -hmm. because there's, there's not a lot of thinking involved really comes from within. Yeah, so you don't pre-select the colors at the moment, right? I try to pre-select colors, but sometimes you don't know what would really accent or mm -hmm. what would um, make the painting pop until you are even halfway through. So sometimes I just add, suddenly add a color and, and that's, real, that's what will make the piece. And as you can see in a lot of my pieces, mm -hmm. there's always a focal point, um, a, a spot on the painting where I will use um, more paint or more of one color. Mm -hmm. I, I don't like my paintings to be too vague. I like them to pop and I like someone's eye to be drawn into a certain area. Perfect. And we have the last one. This is very, very textured and very unique. And this is one of my favorite works. Yeah, so this is my Momentum series. I've been spending a lot of time on this series as well. Um, this series is, has an ambient quality underneath. Mm -hmm. So I actually do an ambient type painting underneath. Yes. And then I apply the paint on top. And I use, there's a lot of circles involved. There's a lot of movement. Um, this is a really exciting. Uh, these are exciting pieces to paint. And they're also very popular. A lot yeah. of people like them. There's a, there's a joy to these pieces. Um, and this one is actually used in a, in a movie Amazing. recently. So stay tuned. I brought a surprise for you. I have a world map. Let's talk about a city or a country where you would love to have an exhibition. OK, OK. And you can tell me more about your dreams. All right. Well, I would say, first and foremost, New York. New York. Definitely New York. Um, and Austin, Texas. Those are two. I mean, I would love to exhibit in a lot of different places. But the US, I would like to break into the US market. Mm -hmm. um, New York has a great art scene, as well as Austin, Texas. And I think I would probably start with those two. Amazing. So let's wrap up and let's give one um, advice for an emerging artist. What do you will recommend them to do to be successful as you are? Right. Um, I would say you really have to put yourself out there. You, you have to take risks, um, learn from other artists, do mm -hmm. your due diligence with yeah. art shows, uh, take preemptive strikes on, on everything that you do. Uh, and don't be afraid to fail. Um, the number of no's that I've received, uh, you know, I've gotten a lot of no's, but within those, uh, eventually you'll get mm -hmm. a yes. yes. And um, I really truly believe that 
um, even if you're sitting at home and you're you're applying to art shows and you're not getting in or you're applying to competitions um, and you're in it's not successful it's really about the energy that you're putting into it and the universe will just reward you for that eventually for sure I totally agree with you and when you get to the point when you will be getting opportunities you will be saying no to people because you know that's your right level and yes. what's your worth right and that's actually that's where I am right now I would say um, I know what to look for I know the red flags um, and I have a higher standard for myself but you know you it's important to make those mistakes along the way yes. or do the shows that maybe aren't like you look back and go oh I can't believe I did that but you need to learn mm -hmm. in order to be able to um, set yourself at a higher standard perfect so and tell us your website your social media handle so people can find you so you can find me at sarahphelps.com and my Instagram handle is at inspire Sarah Facebook is Sarah Phelps artist Thank you very much for watching this video. I will be posting videos once a month. You can find me on Instagram. My handle is at curator on the go.